Chinese-owned company TikTok has, think about this, 150 million users in the United States, where we have a population of about 320 million people. So that's pretty amazing. And although Congress keeps raising all these red flags about it, many members are apparently too hooked on it to give it up. But now a group led by North Carolina Senator Tom Tillis and Texas Congressman Dan Crenshaw writes this. It is troublesome that some members continue to disregard these clear warnings and are even encouraging their constituents to use TikTok to interface with their elected representatives, especially since some of these users are minors. Republican Senator Tom Tillis of North Carolina and Republican Congressman Dan Crenshaw join me now. Senator, great to have, I mean, Senator and Congressman, very good to have you with us. This is one of your colleagues, uh, Congressman Crenshaw, Jamal Bowman, who is on the list of people who uses TikTok and supports it. Here's what he said about it on another network. Watch this. There hasn't been like a top secret congressional briefing on uh, what China is doing with TikTok. Facebook, in real time, ignored Russian interference in our 2016 elections. Like that happened, that's a fact, that's documented. But we had no conversation about banning Facebook. Senator Tillis, what do you say about that? Well, I say that any social media platform uh, that's behaving improperly needs a response from Congress. But this is fairly simple. We have people on TikTok who say that uh, they enjoy the experience. But what they're not keeping in mind is if you have a million followers or five million followers, the, the information and the pattern of life that could potentially be derived from that participation in TikTok could be exploited by the Chinese government. I just left a committee hearing on China. I'm a ranking member of an intellectual property subcommittee. They're using every device possible to get information from the American people. And you could actually use this platform and other platforms for Milan purposes. But, but, but saying some other platform wasn't held to account doesn't really address the problem. The problem is TikTok. The problem are members who need to lead by example. Uh, Congressman Crenshaw, what do you say to what Jamal Bowman had to say there? He's a big supporter of TikTok. And he says, look, then you've got to treat them all the same way. Why aren't you wanting to ban Facebook? I, I, I can't believe I have to explain this to him. I mean, he's got his head in the sand. It, it was a ridiculous what he said. We don't need it. We, look, we don't need a top secret briefing. We had the CEO of TikTok in our in our Energy and Commerce Committee hearing. And it was a very, it was a pretty widespread, everybody saw that hearing. And it was Republicans and Democrats on the same page for once. I, you know, I gotta give TikTok that compliment. They bring us together. And we all have the same points. The Chinese are definitely taking the data. You don't need a top secret briefing to see that. They have access to it. I proved that just by talking to the CEO of TikTok, that ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, has access to that data. Mm -hmm. Here's what I would help people, and this is what people need to understand. Even if the Chinese Communist Party isn't accessing your credit card information right now, here's what they can do with mass amounts of data. They can create software based on that data. They can create algorithms. They can create new advanced AI that is specifically tailored to screw with the American people. Right? And at a certain point in time, now they have access to everything you see on an app that you're addicted to. Do you think that they aren't wait, lying in wait to use that one day? That's the threat. So what's the difference between these apps, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok? One is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. It's, yeah. it's really not that complicated. Uh, it, it's true, very true. Um, you guys are asking through this letter to have members of Congress lead by example, uh, Senator Tillis, to sort of take it upon themselves to give up something that allows them to reach a lot of voters, especially young voters. And, you know, we have a list of many of them who are, you know, quite happy to stay on TikTok. Senators Ossoff, Markey, Sanders, uh, Representative Jackson, Representative AOC, I could go on. Um, but they don't want to give it up because they, they see it as a very useful election tool, Senator. Well, look, if they're only using TikTok to reach their voters, I would suggest they get in a pickup like I do and travel across their state and meet the voters. That's still actually a pretty effective way of doing it. They're also users on virtually every other social media platform. Uh, and that's exactly what Congressman uh, Crenshaw was, uh, was uh, alluded to. I mean, we're not talking about shutting down their voice. We're talking one platform that has an uncomfortable relationship and tie to the Chinese Communist Party. 
Facebook, Instagram, Google, pick a platform. There are plenty of ways to get your message out. I've run for uh, the Senate two different cycles. I've never had a TikTok account, and things worked out okay <laughs> for me. How did you do it? Um, Senator, uh, Congressman Crenshaw, one quick question for both of you. We've talked about Governor DeSantis um, looking for endorsements from members of the House today, talking to members of, of the House and Senate. Um, you know, how are you ready to endorse anyone yet in this Congressman Crenshaw? And what do you think about the sort of internecine battle that is shaping up for the GOP towards 2024? Yeah. I'm definitely not definitely not a fan of the battles going on. It's highly unnecessary. It it it, it only helps the Democrats. I'll probably stay out of this primary. All right, I'm not I'm not going to fall into that. Uh, but I'd like to see a clean race. I'm not I'm already not seeing that. I'm seeing the the you know the attacks on DeSantis aren't really true either. So, um, but I'm but I'm probably going to stay out of this one. Okay, quick thought on that, Senator Chose, before we go. Yeah, I just think I think we've got uh, a lot of great alternatives. I saw the segment of Laura Trump before I got on. I think the, the, the news story is we've got a bench and they don't. And just like Congressman Crenshaw, I'm likely to sit uh, on the sidelines and watch all these very good people bring a good case to the Republican voters. And then we'll have a good, solid nominee to take on Biden, Harris, whoever it may be. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Congressman Crenshaw, Congress, uh, Senator Tillis, thank you both. Good to see you today. Thank you.